Okay, welcome to the electronics class for September the 3rd. Let me, let me remind everybody that uh, if you don't type hello or something similar into the chat box, you will not get credit for being here. Okay, good. Yes, howdy definitely works. Hello with an exclamation mark is even better. I like that. Present, okay, gotta be different, Simon. Okay, that's one of the things I like about you. Okay. Let's uh, be well before we start into the new stuff. Let me just ask are there any questions about last night's homework or anything in general? Not hearing anything, not seeing anything. Okay, all right. Well, let's start off by talking about last night's homework. Um, okay, I'll, uh, let me start sharing my screen here. And so you see my, uh, my Canvas page. Let's click on electronics. And let's go into last night's homework. So there's, you see a bunch of stuff on my page that won't be present on your page. It's not published yet. Let's get down into all right, uh, this is the assignment that was due today. And let me click on preview. So this way it looks a little bit more like what you guys will see. All right, so I gave you a couple links here to, to click on to get you to our, uh, our online uh, electronics textbook. I trust that you all read them before you did the homework. I know a lot of you guys are, trust, are tempted to just jump into the homework and do it without reading the book first, but uh, Please read, read the text first before you jump into the quiz, okay? All right, now question number one. Uh, a lot of you only chose one answer. And I specifically said here that there might be more than one answer. Uh, so you have to pick multiple answers. All right, so let's think about it. What is voltage? Is voltage a measure of how much current is flowing through a circuit? No. And this is a common misconception that I have heard many, many, many times. People, they, they, they design a circuit and let's say that it's got a 1.5 volt battery on it. And so I ask them about the current and they say, well, the, well, it's 1.5 volts, right? So that means the 1.5 volts is flowing through the circuit. Can somebody tell me why that is wrong? What, what's wrong with saying that 1.5 volts is, push, is flowing through the circuit? Somebody unmute yourself and tell me what's wrong with that statement. Because volts is what's pushing it through. It's like pressure while amps is what's flowing. Okay. I love the way that you worded that. That's exactly the way I would have worded it. Yes. The volts, that's the pressure that's pushing stuff through there. It's not what's flowing through there. The stuff that's flowing through is, is the current. The volts is what's pushing it. Okay, so the first one's definitely not right. So is it like electrical pressure? Yeah, that's definitely it. Is it a measure of how many electrons a battery contains? No. What it is, is a measure of how tightly those electrons are pressed in there. Okay, but it's not a measure of how many there are. Is it what pushes the electrons through the circuits? Definitely yes. All right, those are the answers that you should have come up with. And uh, so many of you, both, both for question one and question number two, you only chose one right answer. I specifically said there might be more than one right answer. All right, question number two, uh, what is current? Well, is it a measure of the pressure? No, that's, we just got through saying that's what voltage is. Is it a measure of how much electricity is flowing through the circuit? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Is it a measure of how much an object is pushing back when electricity is flowing through it? No. We have a word for that. Somebody tell me, what is a measure of how much something is pushing back? What do we call that? Resistance. Resistance, very good. Is it a measure of how many coulombs are passing by a, po a point e in each second? Yes, it is. Oops, sorry. Okay. Yes, uh, an amp is defined as one coulomb of charge passing a certain point every second. So two amps would be you have two coulombs per second passing by you. Okay, so we have two possible answers here. 
All right, voltage. What is voltage? Well, okay, or at least what units do we use to measure it? Measuring mm -hmm. volts, that one's pretty obvious. Okay, current is measured in amps. Now, the official name is ampere, but very few people actually say that. Okay, and resistance. What units is resistance? That's ohms. Okay, all right, I see. I, sounds like somebody is not muted. I'm going to go, I'm going to mute everybody. Okay. All right. Okay. So describe an instance when you can have voltage, but no current. Okay. Could somebody please uh, unmute yourself and tell me what is an example when it's possible to have voltage, but not have current? Somebody speak up. You can have voltage but no current whenever there's either a break in the circuit or your switch is open. So okay, which is a break in the circuit. Good. Okay. All right. So you need to have a voltage source. All right. So here's the voltage source, but there's no wires connecting the plus side and the minus side. So we have voltage right here. I'm holding it in my hand, but because we don't have a complete loop, we don't have any current. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways you could have worded that one. Which of the following statements is false? So the more voltage you apply to a circuit, the more current is gonna flow through it. I'm thinking that one's true. Like, oops, okay, yeah. How do you, oh, it looks like once, once you accidentally click it, you can't unclick it. Okay, that's not cool. Okay, how about this next one? When something is connected to ground, electricity can flow through it and into the ground. Yeah, I'm thinking that one is true. Okay, an amp is the same thing as an ampere. Yep, okay, that one's true. Well, it must be this last one then, but let's just check and make sure. When an electrical switch is open, it behaves like an open door and allows electricity to flow through it. Okay, this is important. This is a common misunderstanding a lot of people have. They think of switches like doors and they get confused. If the door is open, that allows people, allows things to pass through the door, true statement, but that's not the way we phrase it when we're talking about electricity. If the switch is open, okay, so let me just maybe draw a picture here. Okay, so here's my battery. Here's the plus side, the minus side. Here's my circuit. Here's my switch, okay. If the switch is in the position that I've got it drawn right now, that switch is what we call open. So electricity cannot flow through it. If I want to electricity to flow, I have to make it so that it's closed. Okay. So it's kind of backwards from the way the doors work. So don't get, uh, don't fall into that trap. Okay. Um, I wanted you guys to create some online circuits and, uh, so you did that. Uh, let me, so I, I told you uh, what I wanted. So I wanted the battery voltage at 20. I said that for the lower light bulb, I wanted the resistance to be at 100. Okay. And then what I wanted you to do was experiment with various resistances for the upper light bulb until you got a current that was equal to uh, what I said right here. Let me zoom in a little so you can see it. Okay, so I wanted you to, um, I wanted you to play with this voltage, uh, or I'm sorry, play with this resistance until the current equaled 5.7. Okay, so hang on a sec while I pause sharing here. And I am going to open up a new folder. Um, Give me a second to do this. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to name any names here, uh, but I am going to uh, show you some of the pictures that got uh, they got uploaded. All right. So here's one of the pictures that got uploaded. Um, dum, 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 taking a sweet time. Okay. All right. So what you can see here is that uh, they didn't tell me what number they chose, uh, but 
I can see down here that whatever it was, it was the right number because that is, this is the current that I asked for. So I don't know what uh, resistance they, uh, they chose, but then I didn't really ask you to tell me. Um, so, okay. All right, now let's we try. We can't actually see the picture. It's um, still stuck on the, your files page. Oh, thank you for telling me that. How about now? Can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So thank you. Thank you for speaking up. Okay. So this light bulb right here, I don't know how many ohms that one went when it was, but when I look down here, I can see that the current is the right amount. So that tells me that they did the job right. Okay. Let's look at what somebody else submitted. Hello. Okay. All right. So this is what somebody else submitted. Let me clear all this out. Okay. You can see their circuit looks different. Instead of using light bulbs, they use this uh, symbol right here. This is the generic, oops, hang on a second. Okay. So this symbol that you see right there, that's the generic symbol for anything that uses up electricity. Could be a light bulb, could be a motor, could be a smartphone charging, doesn't matter. Now this time, they did tell me, they did set it so that it, uh, it shows me. Uh, you see that right here, they've checked the box and said values. So that way I can see what the uh, values of the resistors are. Wait a minute, you know, it just occurred to me, this is an entirely different problem. Sorry, never mind, wrong problem. This is, this is not the one we wanted, so let me stop that. Okay, sorry, that was, that was the other problem. All right, so uh, if you just think about the first one, that was pretty much what I wanted. And uh, most of you did pretty well on that one. Uh, so let's move back to the, okay, so back to the quiz here. All right, so you guys got that one pretty well. All right, let's go down to the next one. All right. So now this is the one where I wanted you to uh, create a uh, circuit and I wanted to have a 12 volt battery. I wanted a seven ohm resistor. I wanted a two ohm resistor and I wanted a four ohm resistor all connected in series. And what does series mean? It means that the circuit has only one branch. So all of the circuit, all of the uh, components need to go through that same branch. Okay, so now, now that we know that, now let's go back to the picture. Okay, so you can see here that they've done exactly what I wanted them to do. Um, and you can see that if you hook it up with a 12 volt battery, a seven ohm resistor, a two ohm resistor, a four ohm resistor, you can see the current works out to be 0.92 amps. Now, we didn't calculate that, we just hooked it up and we saw what we got. Well, today we're gonna to learn how to calculate that. We're, we're gonna find out that if you know the voltage and if you know the total and if you know the total resistance, okay, we can calculate what that uh, uh, what that uh, resist or what the current uh, needs to be. Okay, so we will do that uh, today. But before we do that, let's just let's just see what did other people come up with, because there were a lot of ways that people could have done this. All right, so. Here is uh, an interesting one that somebody did. Okay, and in this case, they didn't do a screenshot. They just took a photograph of the computer, which that works, okay. Uh, now it's kind of a fuzzy photograph, so it's hard to see. But if you look at the uh, current, you'll see we have zero current flowing through here. Now we've got a 12 volt battery. We've got a seven ohm resistor. We've got a two ohm resistor. We've got a four ohm resistor but we don't have any current. Why don't we have any current? Somebody unmute yourself and speak up. Why don't we have any current? It's not attached to the thing you said. Say it louder. It's not attached to the negative. There's no load to it. Okay. Um, all right, you guys are kind of sort of saying it. What, There's we a don't... break in the circuit. Okay, so the circuit's not complete, so it's not going to have a 
Okay, that's what I'm looking for. We don't actually have a circuit. Circuit means you have to have a complete loop. We don't have that. What we need is we need a wire coming all the way around there, connecting that to that. Once we do that, then we will have a circuit and then we will have current flowing through there. But without that, we don't actually have a circuit. Okay, and I did specifically ask for a circuit. Okay, so now I'm not gonna say whose this is. I don't wanna embarrass anybody. Uh, but I had to dock some points here because, uh, yeah, we don't actually have a circuit here. All right, let's try something else here. Let's see what other people came up with. My, uh, okay, there we go. All right, you guys uh, like that? Now notice they did something very interesting here. They connected the one resistor directly to another resistor. They didn't put any wire in between. Same with this one, no wire in between. Is that allowed? Yeah, definitely. You know, if you, if you can get by making a circuit without using wire, hey, more power to you. That's absolutely positively allowed. Okay, all right, let's see. Oh, here's an interesting one. Goes zigging and zagging all over the place. Did they do it right? I'm thinking they did. Now, I, there was one very easy way for me to grade this assignment. All I had to do was look at the current. If I could see that the current was 0.92, then I knew you did it right. Okay, it made my life a lot easier. Okay, so you can rearrange these circuits any way you want. You know, the, the total freedom there. This one was a great one. Now, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say whose this is, but uh, hopefully you can see we've got a little bit of a problem here. Our battery is on fire. Why is the battery on fire? What's the They problem? did not do the resistors right. It is not, oh, <laughs> it looks, they're not really connected all the way, okay. it looks like. All right, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a true statement. So what's happening here is, let me change to a little bit thicker line here. Okay, so the current is coming in through here, comes in here. So it, here we go, but the current does not go through the resistor because the, the wire off to the next resistor leads it here. There, the, there's no reason for the current to flow through this resistor. In fact, it's not possible for the current to flow through that resistor, okay? Because that re it's not connected to anything, all right? So even though the resistor technically is there, that resistor is not in the circuit the electricity is not flowing through the resistor. The electricity just come in right here, going right back out there. And then the same problem with this, going in there, out there, same problem right here, going in there. So these resistors, yeah, technically they're there, but they're not part of the circuit. So what's happening here is we got a battery hooked up with zero resistance. And so the electricity is flowing there through there so fast, the battery is just gonna catch fire. And by the way, that is exactly what can happen. If you hook up a, res a, a circuit like this and you accidentally mess up and you have zero resistance, okay, we have a special name for this. We call this a short circuit, okay? And when you have a short circuit, that battery can get really, really hot. And now a, a battery like this, so let me uh, stop sharing here for a second. A battery like this, if we accidentally short circuit it, it's not gonna catch fire. It will get really warm. Um, I, I, there have been many times when I've been working with students and they build a circuit and they say, Mr. Hendricks, it's not working right. I'm not getting the numbers I'm supposed to get. And then uh, after a minute or two, they say, hey, Mr. Hendricks, I can smell something, something smells weird. And uh, then I walk over and I put my fingers on the battery and the battery is really hot, okay? And uh, so that smell is the smell of the battery burning up or maybe it's the wires burning up. I've got a bunch of wires in my room uh, on what I call the, the wall of shame, melted wires where people accidentally hook things up, short circuits and the, and the, the wire literally melted. Uh, so yeah, you gotta be super careful about that kind of thing. All right, let's see what else uh, other people have. Okay, this one, 
Uh, looking at the current, I see it's 0.92, so I know that it's good. Here's another one. Uh, again, different ways to do it. There's so many different ways you can do this, but I know that you did it right because I see that the current is 0.92, and I think that's about it. Okay, good. All right, let's see. So I see somebody just said something in the chat box here. Unfortunately, when I share my screen here, the chat box goes away. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, so you thought it was 25. Okay, yeah, so you guys are getting ahead of me here. All right. Okay, well, all right, let's move on. So I see you guys have questions about number six. So, okay, let's move on. Um, I've got a couple windows here I got to get rid of. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay, here's question number six. All right. So what I asked you to do was to build a circuit. Um, and and uh, show me uh, show me what you got and oh actually this is the one we talked about I got these a little out of order didn't I uh oh shame on me I got them out of order okay so what what resistance worked okay well tell you what let's build the circuit and see now today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to calculate it so you don't have to build the circuit you could you could actually just uh, cal calculate it in advance. And, and some of you, in fact, several of you, you know how to do the math. But for today, let's assume that we don't know how to do the math. Let's just build it. Okay, so we got a, we got a battery here, and it's supposed to be a 20 volt battery. Okay, so I click on that. I take the voltage up to 20, and there we go. Okay, so I got a 20 volt battery, and let's bring in a wire. Okay, so what did it say that that first, okay, so we got a first light bulb there, that's the mystery light bulb. All right, so we don't know what its resistance is. Uh, and then the second one is a 10 ohm light bulb, okay? So you see how quick and easy this is. I can throw this together like in no time flat, okay? Now that one we know is a 10 ohm light bulb. So, oh, it's the default is 10, isn't that nice? Okay. And then we need, we need to go back to the battery, but we need to put an, uh, a meter in there. So if I, if I just take this right, right straight back to the battery, okay, the light bulbs come on and uh, everything's cool here, but I don't know how much current is flowing through there, okay? So there's two ways I can measure the current. One is I can take this guy, and if I just put him right there, he tells me how much current there is, okay? Uh, but there's another way to do it, which is this guy right here. And uh, so let's try using him. Now I can't use him quite the same way. If I'm going to use this guy, what I have to do is I have to break the circuit like that. And now I put him in here. Okay. And then I connect him up. Okay. Bingo. And notice I get the same reading. Okay. So I have what, uh, what I asked for. I got a 20 volt battery, a 10 ohm resistor. I want the current to be 0.57, all right? So I've got too much current. So should I increase or decrease the amount of resistance here? So I've got too much current. Okay, so you're saying decrease or, or are you saying increase? Increase, okay. All right, so let's increase. Okay, good, oh, I see it's looking good. All right, now I've forgotten what we're supposed to get. What I asked for, I asked for 0.57. Okay, so it looks like I went a little bit too far. So let's come back here. Bingo, there we go, 25 ohms. That's the right answer, okay? So 25 is the answer. Now, at, when we're finished today, you will be able to calculate that. You won't need to just do trial and error with our simulator. You will be able to calculate in advance what that needs to be. Okay, and let's see, question seven. Um, oh, okay, all right, that was one we've already done. So I think, I think we're finished now. Before I move on to today's homework, let me ask, uh, does anybody have any question? Not seeing anything or hearing anything. 
Okay, let's talk about the maximum limit. So basically the idea today is we want to know how to calculate in advance what... Wait, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I was muted. Um, do you think we can retake the test if we didn't get a perfect score on it, like starter number three? Ah, okay. Um, thank you for uh, saying that because I did intend to talk about that and I forgot. Uh, the answer to that is, yeah, these quizzes that we've been doing right now, uh, I do allow retakes. I, I trust you guys all read the disclosure statement, right? In the disclosure statement, it says that I allow you to retake quizzes as many times as you want, and it's not going to cost you a late pass. Uh, so you can go back and you can retake the quizzes. And by the way, when you took the quiz, many of you have figured out that it will give you a score uh, as soon as you're done with the quiz. Now, it can't, it can't score all of the questions. The questions where you have to answer using words or the questions where you have to answer using a file upload, Canvas isn't smart enough to know whether those are right or not. But if, we, if you ever have a quiz question where you have to type in a number or pick a multiple choice, Canvas will grade it for you right on the spot. Okay, and so if you see that it didn't give you all the points that you thought you should have got, you know you did something wrong, you are allowed to go back and retake it right there on the spot. You can do it as many times as you want. And several of you have figured that out because I noticed when I graded your tests, when I, when I looked at your quizzes, I saw that you had done multiple takes. And by the way, I hope you guys realize every time you retake the quiz, Canvas records it. So if you retake a quiz 10 times, I see all 10 of those times and I'm okay with it. I, 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 I encourage you, take it as many times as you want. Now, some of you might think that it's, it would be cheating to retake it now, now that we've gone over the answers. Uh, but because I'm such an incredibly nice guy, I'm gonna let you go back and do that, okay? Go back and, and, uh, and retake it and uh, turn, turn that, uh, that low score into a perfect score. Uh, I'm okay with that. Now, there is one really important thing you guys need to know. Pay close attention, this is really important. I do not automatically link Canvas with SIS the way that some teachers do. And the reason I don't is because the teachers that do that have told me that they've seen some really weird things happen where sometimes the link gets done right, but sometimes it doesn't get done right. And so people retake a quiz and, and the new quiz score doesn't get put in there or you know, things just weird things happen. So. I have decided that I'm not going to automatically link Canvas and SIS. I do it manually. Therefore, when we have taken a quiz and we've talked about the answers here, if after that, if, if, if you retake a quiz anytime after the due date, you have to tell me that you've retaken it. Because otherwise, I may have already transferred the scores into SIS. Uh, and if you don't tell me that you've retaken it, I'll never know. And you'll go in on Canvas and Canvas will have you a nice higher score. But SIS, which by the way, SIS is also Aspire. It goes by two different names. Okay, so Canvas will show your new score, but Aspire will not. So you have to email me telling me you've retaken it so that I can manually transfer it in. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so Griffey's asking, what is Aspire? Aspire is also SIS, if you know what SIS is, but if you don't know what SIS is, that's the system that records your official grades. Whatever grade you see in Canvas, that's not your official grade. Aspire is a separate software program that our school uses, and that's where we record your official grades. So if you don't know what Aspire is, um, call to the office. Um, and they will give you a password and they will give you a user ID uh, so that you can then get onto Aspire. Okay. All right. Let's talk about tonight's homework. Let's go back into modules. Okay. And tonight's homework is Ohm's Law. I'm sure that a lot of you guys already know what Ohm's Law is. In fact, I know for certain that a lot of you guys already know what Ohm's Law is. 
but uh, let's uh, let's assume that, that you don't because a lot of you in fact do not okay um, and let me go to preview so that it'll look more like what you guys will actually see okay well the instructions say read this section of your online textbook and here's the link okay let's click on it let's see what it says Here is the section in your uh, uh, online textbook, Ohm's Law, and the idea is how voltage, current, and resistance relate. So it's, it's an equation where if you know any two of the three, you can calculate what the third one is. Um, and so we could read through this, or how about instead of reading through it, let's actually, let's play with the circuit and see how it works. All right, let's build ourselves a, battery, a circuit. Let's go with the simplest circuit that we can possibly go with. We got a battery that supplies some voltage. We got this resistor here. And remember, a resistor is just uh, anything that uses up electricity. Could be a light bulb, could be a motor, could be absolutely anything. Let's take a wire and connect it up. All right, bingo. And you see electricity is flowing through there. Now the default mode for this uh, simulator here is it, uh, let's see, hang on a second here. I've got a bunch of windows that they're opening up here that make, oh, okay. The default mode is that it shows the electron movement, which is really unfortunate because the default mode in pretty much every textbook that I've ever read is actually the conventional current. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to change that to conventional current, okay? But we don't really need to show the current. How about let's just turn the current completely off, right? There's no need to show the current, all right? And you, hopefully you guys have figured out that if you look down here, you see that we have two options for how we can show our circuit. What we could do is if we if we go with the default, then you see an actual battery, you see a resistor. If you click on this symbol over here, it gives us these schematic representations. And this is what I'm going to be using pretty much every day from now on in this class. Instead of drawing a picture of a battery, I'm going to use this symbol right here. This is the schematic symbol that means battery. Notice there's a long wire and there's a short wire. The long wire is always by definition the plus side of the battery. The short wire is always by definition the minus side of the battery. And where you got this squiggle here, that's the generic symbol for a resistor. So get used to it. That's what we're going to start using from now on. Okay. All right. So we have our battery. We have our resistor. But I want to measure the current. All right. Let's break the circuit right here. Oops, try again. Okay, there, we just broke the circuit. And let's take this thing, it's called an ammeter. Let's connect it up like that. And bingo. All right, you see that we have 0.9 uh, volts or 0.9 amps flowing. Let's turn on the values. All right, so if we have a nine volt battery and a 10 ohm resistor, we have 0.9 flowing through it. How about let's change that? How about if it's if instead of having a nine volt battery, we have a 10 volt battery. Notice we now have one amp. What if we up that to 20 volts? Okay, so instead of 20, uh, 10, 10 volts, we up it to 20 volts. Come on, there we go. How much do we have? 20 amps, all right? So at this point we say to ourselves, hmm, if only there was some equation that we could use so that would help us to figure out how these guys are related. Yes, if only. If only. You want to tell us what the equation is? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, come on. You can tell I'm us. I'm anti-social. Uh, well, well, here's your chance to be social. I know you know it, Simon. Tell us. What's the equation? No. Okay, no. Somebody else. Isn't it volts it? over ohms? 
volts over ohms. You guys agree? So it sounds to me like what Luke is saying is that the current can be calculated if you know the number of volts and you divide it by the number of ohms. Okay, that's what he claims. Let's see if that works. How many volts do we have? We have 20. How many ohms do we have? We have 10. What is, what is 20 divided by 10? Hey, what do you know? It looks like uh, Luke's suggestion there might be right. Let's try another one. Instead of 20 ohms, how about, let's take it up to 30 ohms. All right, so what do we got? We got 30, 30 divided by 10 equals three. Does that work? Hey, I think Luke is onto something here. I think his equation is gonna work. Now, instead of writing out the words current equals uh, volts oh, divided by ohms, let me, uh, let me stop sharing for just a minute so you can see me stroking my chin. If only there was a one letter abbreviation that we could use for all these things. Okay, so anybody got any suggestions what we could use as a one letter abbreviation for current? Not hearing anything. I. All right, so you're suggesting that we use I. Now, current starts with the letter C. So wouldn't it make more sense to use C? How, how come you're using I instead of C? There is a good reason, by the way. I know, but I forgot that reason. Okay. Remember that we talked the other day about something called a Coulomb? Okay. What is a Coulomb? Come on, guys, speak up. You're breaking my Coulomb heart. Coulomb is a certain amount of electrons. Very good. Okay. Large number, six point something to times 10 to the power of 18. Yeah, it's a very large number. All right. Uh, the idea is that if we were to count how many electrons go or going by a certain point, it would be such a huge number. It would just be unmanageable. All right. So what we do is we say, okay, we're going to take this big number of electrons and we're going to give it a name. It's, so think of it like instead of counting the number of molecules of water, we're going to say, okay, we're going to define the thing called a gallon. So a gallon of water molecules is, is pretty much the same thing as a coulomb of electrons. All right. Um, and coulomb starts with letter C. So if we take current and use the letter C for current, that's going to be confusing because people are going to get mixed up with, uh, with uh, coulomb. All right. So Luke, I think it was Luke suggested that instead of calling it current, instead of calling it the letter C, let's call it the letter I. And the reason for I is because the French word for current starts with letter I. And the, the scientists who did a lot of the initial work uh, related to electricity were French scientists. So it makes sense we'll use the letter I. All right, so current is, uh, is going to be letter I. How about voltage? You guys agree we can we can we can go with the letter V for voltage. Are you happy with that? Let me just get rid of this. Okay. If we go with the letter V for voltage, do you see any potential confusion there? Boy, why does my thing not want to work here? All right. Okay, so I'm thinking we're good with V. All right, resistance. That starts with letter R. So if we give it R, are there, are there any other words we've been using that begin with letter R that would be con potentially confusing? No, I think we're good. All right, so these are the three letters that we're going to use whenever we're doing math mathematical equations. All right, so we're gonna then say that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Okay, now there is one slight problem. When you guys read the online textbook today, because I, I know you always read the book before you do the homework, 
So I didn't say if you read it today, I said when you read it today, right? You're going to find that they don't use the letter V. Uh, let's see, where, where'd it go here? What happened to my... Okay, here we go. All right, they don't use the letter V. They use the letter E. So instead of saying I equals V over R, when you look in the book here, you're going to find that I equals E divided by R. So don't, don't let it bother you. E and V are the same thing. Some textbooks use E, some textbooks use V. Most of the textbooks that I have seen use V. But the textbook that we're using for this class uses E, so I guess, I guess that's what we'll have to do. All right. So let's go back here. Now, this diagram that you guys see right here, this little triangle, E-I-R, this is an interesting way that electricians have developed for people who don't know math. Um, now, you guys, you all should know math, so you really shouldn't need this, but we can, uh, we can show it to you because you're going to see it, so you might as well get used to it. This equation right here, this is the equation that I like the best. Uh, this is the one that we just got through developing, I equals V over R. And uh, if you use the, uh, the method taken by the book, they're saying, remember this triangle here. And then if you ever want to know what anything is, what you can do is you can just cover up the thing that you're interested in. So if I is the thing that we're interested in, we cover it up, okay? Now, once we've got that covered up, what do you see is remaining? You see we've got an E on the top and an R on the bottom. Well, hey, guess what? There's E on the top and R on the bottom. All right, so that seems to work. All right, what if we wanted to know what the E is or, or the voltage? What do we do? Well, we cover up the E and then we look at what remains and we've got an I and an R and notice we don't have one on top of the other, the two are right next to each other. So that means that we multiply them, okay? So it means then that E equals I times R. And then the last one here, yeah, let's say we wanna know what R is, okay? So if R is what we're interested in, we cover that up and what are we left with? Well, we got E on top, I on the bottom, and there you go, R equals I, E over I. So you see that you don't need to know math in order to do this, okay? But you guys know math. Every single one of you should be an expert. I mean, this is just ninth grade basic, basic algebra. Every one of you should be able to do this. So what I recommend is instead of using the triangle here, I recommend just use algebra. And we've got three different forms of Ohm's law. This is the one I like right here. So just remember that one, I equals V over R. And if you ever want to uh, do something else like this, let's suppose that I want to know what, uh, what V is. So what do I do here? I've got I've got V over R and I want to get rid of the R. How do you get rid of the R? Well, if you got R on the bottom, multiply both sides by R and that goes away. But what do the rules of mathematics say? If you multiply one side by R, what do you have to do with the other side? You got to multiply the other side by R too. So what are you left with? V equals IR. Or if you use the books notation, E equals IR. Okay, I'm, you're going to see that I'm going to use V and E interchangeably. So get used to seeing it both ways. All right. All right. Well, what if, what if R is the thing that we want? Rather, okay. So we're going to start with the equation that I like to memorize, I equals V over R. Okay. Now, I want to solve this for R. So how would your math teacher solve this for R? Well, what you could do is you can multiply both sides by R. Okay. So that gets R up on top. But now it's connected to an I, and I don't like the I. I want to get rid of the I. How do I get rid of the I? Well, I divide, oops, okay. I divide both sides by I. So the I goes away. What, I'm, what am I left with? I'm left with R equals V over I. 
which if you look up here, yep, they are the same thing. Uh, instead, of, instead of using B, we're calling it an E, but it's the same thing. All right, so this little diagram that you see right here uh, is uh, discussed in the book, and I think it's pretty straightforward. So I put it up here for you guys to use if you want when you're taking the quiz. Um, but I would hope that you really don't need it. Okay, now, uh, I've got, you can see there's some quiz questions here, so I don't want to talk about the quiz questions themselves because I don't want to give you the answers. Let's just go over here and let's do a couple of generic things. So let's clear this up. Let's bring in a generic battery. And I'm going to use the symbols, not the batteries. Let's bring in some generic resistor. Bingo. Okay. Um, let's hook up some wires. Now I'm going to want to know how much current is flowing, so that means I better bring in an ammeter here. Oh, that works. Okay, that wasn't okay. All right, good. All right. So now let's uh, let's say that we've got a resistor here, and let's make the resistor be how about 46? Okay. And let's turn. Oh, let's come back here and do that again. All right. So, so here's a question for you guys. If the resistor is 46 ohms, and you can see that the current there is 0 0.2 amps, so what is the voltage? Now, some of you are saying, well, Mr. Hendricks, just click on the battery and that'll tell you what the voltage is. Well, no, that's too easy. I don't want to do that. Right. What I want you guys to do is I want you to type into the chat box and in the chat box, I want you to tell me what is the, uh, the voltage going to be. Let's see how good you are at doing math. Not seeing any answers here. All right, now I'm seeing an answer. Let's see if the rest of you agree. Okay, wow, well, it looks like everybody's coming up with the same answer there. That's reassuring. Okay, how did we do that? Well, I'm trusting the way you did was you said that you know that I equals V over R. And so if voltage is what we're looking for, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by R. So that goes away. So then we're left with V equals R times I. So that means that 46 times 0 0.2. And what do you get when you do that? So you guys are claiming you get 9.2. And since everybody's claiming it, I think the odds are probably pretty good that it's right. But let me just make sure that uh, my calculator agrees. Hey, what do you know? I get the same thing you get. Funny how that works. All right. So that tells us that the voltage there must be 9.2 volts. Now, let's see if our uh, simulator here agrees, right? Let me click on the battery and see what it says. Ooh, isn't this interesting? Our simulator says 9.0, not 9.2. What's the deal? Well, what we've just discovered is a limitation with our simulator. Our simulator rounds things off. It doesn't, it doesn't calculate things as accurately, accurately as we might like. The simulator rounds things off. So when you do tonight's homework, don't be surprised if you do the calculations on your calculator and then you say, well, I'm not sure if it's right. Let's go to our simulator and let's build the circuit and see if the simulator gives us the same answer. Don't be surprised if the simulator gives you an answer that's slightly different when you calculate it. Now, it should only be slightly different. If it's, if it's like hugely different, okay, then something went wrong. But if it's only slightly different, well, then don't worry about it. Okay, you guys good with that? Now, another important thing you're going to need to know for tonight's homework um, is probably a good way to see it is this. All right, let's, so this battery that I'm holding in my hand right here, uh, this is a battery that you guys should be familiar with. You probably use them in toys and things like that. Somebody speak up and tell me how many volts does this battery have? 1.5. 1.5. Now, by the way, you guys should know that if you buy a battery 
fresh from the store and you get out your your uh, voltmeter and you measure the voltage on a battery you just barely bought you're probably going to get a number bigger than 1.5 it's probably going to be like 1.6 or maybe even a little bit more and then after you've used this battery for a while don't be surprised if the voltage drops down below 1.5 you know, it might be 1.45, 1.4, might even be 1.3. When the, when the thing starts running out of juice, uh, the voltage drops. And, but as long as it's like 1.3 or so, it's probably still usable. But once it gets down below about 1.2, then it's probably not going to work very well. And when it gets down to about 1.1, I think you're going to find that it doesn't work for you at all. All right, so the fact that it says 1.5 on the case, I mean, right there it says 1.5 does not mean that it actually is 1.5. Could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. So be careful about that. All right. Uh, okay, so, all right, let's, uh, let's set our voltage there for 1.5. Uh, okay, so our voltage is 1.5. All right, and now our current, or I'm sorry, our resistor here. Let's really crank up the resistance a lot. Let's take it up to the maximum we can possibly get. All right, what does it tell us the current is? All right, 0.02. Now tell you what, let's get out our calculator. So I want everybody to get out your calculator and I want you to see if we get the same numbers. So according to this now, uh, okay, so our voltage is 1.5. Our resistor is 120 ohms. Now, Ohm's law tells us that I equals V over R. Everybody get out your calculators, and I want you to type into the chat box and tell me what you get. And of course, my chat box doesn't want to come up here. All right, so I'm seeing uh, one number. Okay, let's uh, get the rest of you in here. I wanna see some more numbers here. Come on guys, you should have answers by now. Oh, by the way, maybe you don't have calculators with you. Okay. All right, so the, all right, now I'm seeing numbers that are all over the place. This is really interesting. So I'm seeing some people are saying it's 1.44, others are saying it's 0 0.125. Wow. Uh, and then we got it. Oh boy, this is interesting. I'm seeing numbers all over the place here. This has me worried. Okay, well, let's do it together. Our voltage we know is 1.5. Our resistance here is 120. Okay, when I get out my calculator and I take 1.5 divided by 120, right, I get, 0 0.0125. So 0 0.0125. All right, those of you that got 1.4, uh, not quite sure what you were thinking there. It looks like this is something that uh, we do, in fact, need a little bit more practice with. Now, if you compare our number with their number, you'll see they're not exactly the same but uh, we're just going to chalk that off to the fact that they round things off a little bit. That's okay. Now, a lot of people who work with electricity day in, day out, they don't like numbers that are less than one or bigger than a thousand. So if they measure something and their answer works out to be 0 0.0125, but I tell you what, let me clear this. Okay. So, People who, who, day, who do this day in and day out, they like their numbers to be, they like them to be greater than one and less than a thousand. That's what they like their numbers in. And so what they do is they change the units to make it so that it comes out to be a number that they like, All right? So this number right here, that's how many amps but if instead of using amps, let's say we Billy change is kilo. Yeah, milli and kilo and all those fun things. Yeah. So this is something that you guys need to be very, very familiar with because we're going to be using this a lot. 
a milliamp is equal to actually whenever whenever I use three three horizontal lines like that that doesn't just mean equal to that means is defined as okay one one thousandth of an amp so if we've got 0 0.0121 amps that's the same thing as 12.1 milliamps this and this are the same thing. When I write a quiz for you, or actually when I wrote the quiz that you're going to take today, sometimes I wrote the answer like this, but sometimes I wrote it like this. So you guys have got to get really good at doing unit conversions. So let's take a minute and talk about how to do unit conversions. Now, in your science class, hopefully you've already talked about this, but if, so let's say that we've got 0 0.0125 amps. And what we want to do is we want to convert that into milliamps. So what I'm going to show you is called the Ames method for unit conversion. And People who go to other schools, they say, wait a minute, how dare you call it the Ames method? That's the same method that we use. Yeah, I realize that's true, but uh, I'm gonna call it the Ames method anyway, and so do all of your other science teachers. All right, so here's the deal with the Ames method. What you do is you look at the units you've been given, and then somewhere you need to figure out how many amps equals how many milliamps. So I just got through saying that one milliamp is equal to one one thousandth of an amp, and we could do it that way. Or another way to do it is to recognize that one amp equals 1,000 milliamps, okay? This one is, is a little bit more useful. Let me, okay, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Okay, there we go. Okay, sometimes my screen does weird things on me. All right. So this one is probably a little bit more useful to go with. All right, so here's the Ames method. We take the number that we were given. We write parentheses in a horizontal line. And then we look at our, un our unit conversion factor. One of these guys is gonna go on top, one of them is gonna go on bottom. Which one goes where? Should I put the one amp on top or should I put the one amp on the bottom? How about let's put it on the bottom? And then the thing that it's equal to goes on the top. Okay. All right, does that sound reasonable? Let me uh, get rid of a bunch of these things. Okay, so now if we look at this, we got, we got amps on top. Oops, uh, I didn't mean to, it's still in eraser mode here. Didn't want to erase yet. Okay, so what we can do is we can start canceling things out now. So if we've got amps on top and amps on the bottom, they cancel out. And what are we left with? We're left with milliamps. So if I take 0 0.0125 times 1,000, well, all I have to do is move the, de the, the decimal over 1, 2, 3, and there's our new decimal. So our answer then is 12.5 milliamps. So 12.5 milliamps is the same thing as 0 0.0125 amps. Are there any questions about how I did that? We are going to be doing a whole lot of unit conversions in this class. You guys need to get really good at doing unit conversions. We're going to be doing it so much that you're going to have to be able to do it in your head. Uh, how about let's practice a couple more. Let's go. Okay, let's clear that. Instead of doing milliamps, how about kilo whatevers. 
Uh, because it doesn't have to be amps. It could be volts, it could be ohms, could be meters, could be anything. Um, let's go with a new definition. So one kilo whatever. In this case, let's say ohms. But it doesn't have to be ohms. It could be volts, it could be what it could be meters, it could be anything. So one kilo whatever is equal to 1,000 whatevers. So in this case, the whatever is an ohm. Okay. All right. So this is a unit that you guys are going to be using a lot. So, and boy, that didn't, that's a terrible ohm. Let's try to finish that up. Okay, that's better. All right. So if one kilo ohm is 1,000 ohms, then here's a problem that I'm going to give you. And I want everybody to do this problem. And I want you to type it into the uh, chat box what your answer is. So if I were to say that I've got 37,000 ohms, I want you to tell me how many kilo ohms is that? Okay. I'll give you guys a minute to think about that. How many kilo ohms is 37,000 ohms? All right, I'm seeing lots of answers. It looks like everybody agrees that the correct answer is 37. Okay, I agree too. But just in case that there are any of you out there who are a little unsure of this, and I'm, because I'm sure that's the case, let's follow the Ames method. So if we've got 37,000 ohms, so the Ames method says that we draw parentheses and a horizontal line. And then we look at our conversion factor, which is up here. So one of these guys is going to go on top and one of them is going to go on bottom. So if we got 37,000 ohms, that's the same, same, same thing as 37,000 ohms divided by one. So, so you see the ohm is up on top. In order to get this cancel out, we're going we're gonna to have to take this guy and put him on the bottom. We're going to have to have 1,000 ohms down on the bottom. That means this guy then must go up on top. So that means one kilo ohm goes up on top. All right, so ohms cancels ohms. That's what we want. So our answer then is 37,000 divided by 1,000. And that's gonna be kilo ohms. All right, so that zero cancels that, that zero cancels that, that leaves zero cancels that. So we're left with 37, oops, I should, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we're left with 37 kilo ohms. All right, anybody have questions about that? Now, if you're too embarrassed to admit in front of everybody they have questions, you can type messages to me privately. You guys know how to send private messages? Okay. So uh, I'm going to give you a, a, a minute or so. If anybody didn't understand what we just did and you don't want to admit it in front of everybody else, send me a private message and I'll be careful not to say your name out loud. And if I don't see any private messages appearing here, then I will assume that you guys are good with this. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. All right. Uh, all right, we're going to go ahead then. All right, so let's just talk about the conversion factors that we're going to be using a whole lot. So one milli whatever is equal to 1,000 of those whatevers. Okay, one kilo whatever is equal to one one thousandth. Okay, well, hang on a second here. I got that backwards. Oh, that's terrible. You know, if you guys had said something, that would have been a wig point. Okay, if you if I catch my own mistakes, then uh, then it's not a wig point. It's only a wig point if you guys catch them. So if you'd been quick, I would have been wearing the wig right now. So one milli whatever is one one thousand of a whatever. One kilo whatever that is one thousand whatevers. Okay, how about one mega whatever? Anybody know what one mega is? Is it 10,000? Good guess, but not quite. Somebody else? 
A million. A million, very good. So one mega whatever is one million of your whatevers. Um, I've got I've got windows that you guys don't have and some of my windows are in the way. All right, now there's one other conversion factor that you guys need to know because we're gonna be using it a lot and it's on the small side. It's one uh, micro whatever. Okay, try this again. Okay, so one micro whatever is one one millionth of a whatever. Okay, and by the way, there should be an I right up here. Okay, so a milliamp is one one thousandth of an amp. A kilo ohm is one thousand ohms. A megavolt is one million volts. A microvolt is one one millionth of a volt. Right? These are things that you need to know. And also you need to know the, uh, the abbreviations for them, okay? So a milliamp is written like that, okay? A microamp, remember this is one one millionth of an amp, is written with a, with a funny symbol that looks like a U, but it's got an extra tail on the left side. That symbol in front of the A right there, that is the Greek letter mu. M-Y-U is the way you spell it. That's in, in English anyway. All right, so when you see that U with the extra little tail on the left side, that is the, the abbreviation for microamp, okay? So a kiloamp is like that. And then a mega amp or mega volt or mega ohm, you know, whatever, mega whatevers, is a capital M. Now it's really important that you get your capitals and your, your lower cases uh, straight, in the, at least in this case. Notice that's a lowercase m, that's an uppercase m. Okay, so lowercase m means milli, uppercase m means mega, okay? And for kilo, it doesn't really matter. And for micro, you'll never see it any other way than that. All right, I would suggest you guys write, write this down in your notebooks there. Go ahead with your question. Is there any difference between microamp and megaamp, the abbreviation? Uh, between microamp and megaamp? Yeah, is there any difference in the abbreviation? Yeah, um, a megaamp is a capital M. Microamp, is a lowercase mu. So they're totally different letters. Um, I, I might not be understanding your question right. Oh no, I was just confused because they, they both look like capital M's. Oh yeah, I can see how they do. They do both kind of look like capital M's. So let me do it a little bit more clearly. So this is a capital M. So a megavolt looks like that. Okay, a microvolt looks like that. Okay, so it, it is, don't think of it as a capital M, although I can see it certainly does kind of, you know, if, I, if I'm if I'm sloppy in how I write it, if I write it like that, I can see, yeah, it does kind of look like a capital M. Don't, don't do it that way. Do it like this. It's a U with an extra tail on the left side there, and the tail on the left side is longer than the tail on the right side, All right? So this is mega volt and this is micro volt. Okay, so thank you for uh, bringing that up because I can see how that could have been very confusing. All right, well, I'm thinking that you guys now know everything that you need to know for tonight's homework. Uh, so just go on to Canvas, click on the link that I gave you, make sure you read that section in the book. I think they do a good job of reading it. And don't be confused if they use the letter E in places where I use the letter V, we're gonna, they're gonna be interchangeable. Um, and then once you've read that, then just go into Canvas, click on the link, take the quiz. It should be pretty straightforward. Before I end the meeting, two things I ask. One is if you have any questions 
that you were uh, you were a little embarrassed to ask because you knew that this uh, meeting was being recorded and you didn't want your question recorded wait a few wait just a little while because i'm going to turn off the recording in just a, a few seconds actually um, and so after I turn in the recording, stick around and, and we'll talk one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and those of you that think that you're ready, before you leave the meeting, please type bye into the chat box. And then once you've done that, you can go. All right, so I am going to uh, turn off the meeting, or the recording anyway. <laughs>